a good fish, Scotty. Well done. Oh, lovely fish. You can see the circle there right in the corner of his mouth. Well done, mate. Nice fish. Well done. Woo! Well done, Scott. Yeah, we get a few snapper off here, Scotty, in uh, winter time. Yeah, and uh, great eating. You know, anything a much bigger than that, I normally put back. They're a little bit tough. This size is perfect for eating. Yeah. So if we got a massive snapper today, I'd probably pop him back, mate. You know, right. um, because uh, look, they just tend to be a little bit tougher because these younger ones are just. So you're gonna spoil me and cook him up later on yeah. for lunch for me? <laughs> we'll see how we go, mate. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Hey guys, Paul here from the Organ Cook. Welcome back to our channel. We're actually cooking some snapper today that we caught yesterday. Um, Scotty's already filleted them for me. He's taken the skin off, so what I've done, I've wanted to get a little bit of texture onto that fish. First thing what I've done is actually crumb the fish. And what I've done is got some um, pine nuts, uh, pistachios, and also some uh, dried chili. Um, and we basically pound that all up together in a pestle and mortar. And then we put it into a tray. And then what we do, whip some eggs, get some seasoned flour. We're gonna season that with a little bit of uh, lemon and herb seasoning and a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. Then we're gonna pass the fish through the flour and then through the egg wash. And then also through the pistachios and the pine nuts and the, uh, and the chili. There's also a little bit of coriander in there that you're throwing in there. And we throw that in right at the end and we don't actually bash that because it'll actually bruise it. So once we've done that, and we've crumbed the fish. What we do then is we put it between some baking paper. So that's what I've got ready at the moment and I'm just gonna pop that in the fridge. Now I'm gonna be serving that with a sweet chili caramel. Sweet chili caramel is such an easy dish to make. What we do is we get some uh, palm sugar. So um, basically what I do is get the brown sugar and the palm sugar together. I melt that down in the pan with a little bit of lime juice. It's the juice of two limes that I put in there. And I also add some fish sauce, some rice wine vinegar, and we just bring all that down to a caramel. So what I've done is roughly chopped some chilies, I've roughly chopped some garlic, I've also sliced up some uh, coriander. And uh, when we slice the coriander, we only want to slice it once, so just slice it nice and fine once. If you start to chop it, it bruises the coriander. Um, also, I've got some ginger here, and I'm going to show you how to peel the ginger with a spoon. It's one of the quickest ways to peel ginger. You just use a spoon and peel away and it only takes a few seconds. It's better than using a knife and you lose too much uh, ginger when you actually use a knife. So uh, we slice that up really, really fine and then just roughly chop that. All these ingredients straight into the pan and stir them round, bring it up to the boil again and then I'm just gonna leave that to infuse. So when the guys turn up, what I've gotta do is just heat that caramel up and I'm gonna serve that with this fish. And the only other thing I need to do is serve something with the fish and I'm going to do some fragrant basmati rice. Now basmati rice is absolutely beautiful. It's so easy uh, to cook and I'm going to show you how to cook it. But what's great about basmati rice is that it's really low GI. So it's not like your uh, jasmine rice where you eat it and next minute you're hungry. But what I do is I wash the rice three times. Now the reason why I wash the rice three times is to get rid of any starch that's in there. So we put it into a colander and we wash it three times till the water runs clear. Now we get rid of that starch because it stops it from being too gluggy. If I didn't do that, the rice would absolutely be stodgy and stick together. And we don't want that. We want just really perfectly steamed rice. Now, if you don't have a rice cooker at home, I'm showing you a way to do it without a rice cooker. So what we do is basically now we've washed our rice, lay it flat in the pot. And then what you want to do is just fill the pot up with enough water just to cover your uh, first finger. Okay, lay it flat on the rice and just cover, just cover your finger. Okay, so then we pop it on 
Uh, we put a lid on it and we start to bring it to the boil. We've also got to put some seasoning in there, so make sure you put some salt in the water. Then what we do is we bring it to the boil. Now you can stir it at this stage before it comes to the boil, but once it comes to the boil, do not stir your rice ever again. Right, or what will happen is that your rice will not cook all the way through correctly, not evenly anyway. Now once it comes to the boil, your lid goes on and you turn your temperature on your... Now this is a critical point. Make sure you turn your temperature down to low because we want to steam the rice now we don't want to boil it we don't want it all jumping up and down and breaking up so pop the lid on and then it's 15 minutes from then so easy now once the 15 minutes is up you'll see some steam holes coming through the rice so then what I do is I take the lid off and I just fluff that rice up with a fork and then all we do then is just rest the rice now that'll stay hot for a good half an hour so easy Hey mate, how are you? I've arrived. Yeah, you've arrived. What's for lunch? Well, hey, uh, I know I'm running late. I do apologise. <laughs> no, you're not running late, mate. I was just stirring you up. Um, yeah, well, we've got some of that reef fish that we caught yesterday. Wonderful. So uh, I'm going to do that for you and Trudy and uh, Danielle. Yeah, good. So, um, but you can, uh, I've already done a lot of preparation, so it's pretty quick. Okay. Simple sounds, as that. Sounds really good, mate. All right, mate, let's sounds do it. Really good. <laughs> so, Scotty's arrived, so I'm going to start cooking, guys. So first thing I need to do is get some oil in the pan. Okay, so I've got a bit of oil in the pan there, guys. Getting it nice and hot at the moment. Now the reason why I put these, uh, these in the fridge is so that the egg would stick and the nuts would stick to the actual fish. So I'm going to start frying these. And um, your pan's got to be fairly hot when you put them in. Otherwise, what will happen is, is that that's not quite hot enough at the moment. But what will happen is, is that all the nuts will just fall off. So you want it to seal straight away. You want the egg to seal. So I'll just turn that up a little bit. But also, I don't want it to be too hot, or what will happen is the nuts will burn. So you sort of got to get a, like a, a medium sort of heat. So that's the sort of noise that we need to hear. Now the side that we actually want to put down is the presentation side first. Now this fish that we caught the other day, so we've got um, some really nice pearl perch, we've also got some beautiful snapper. It lends itself to this sort of dish because it's nice and fine, it's not too thick, and um, it cooks quite quickly, so that's exactly what we want. Now Scotty did skin them, and took the skins off, so what I wanted to do is create a little bit of texture, so that's why we put them nuts on there, and that'll create a little bit of texture, a little bit of crunch. Um, instead of it all just being soft, it's going to go so well. Once it seals that beautiful sweet white flesh in, it's going to be beautiful. These nuts are getting really nice and toasty now. Beautiful. That's sensational. It doesn't take very long, so you've got to be very, very careful you don't burn them. And then we're going to turn that down. Really, really low. And what will happen is the residual heat in the pan will finish off cooking the fish. So there you go guys, beautiful reef fish and it's going to be served with our sweet chilli caramel. Just a little squeeze of lime juice over the top. I'm going to serve that with our basmati rice and hopefully the guys will enjoy it. So I'm sort of going to serve this as just a sharing plate. Okay guys, so they'll just help themselves to it. Get all in the middle of the uh, table. Now I'm going to put some of this beautiful sauce on top. Lovely, look at that, wow. All that beautiful spices, crispy fish. Oh my God, I'm in heaven. And we'll just top that with a little bit of coriander just for a bit of color. Wow, beautiful. Hey Scotty, here we go mate. Yeah mate. What do you reckon? Oh, wonderful job. All right? Hey, look at that. Yeah. That's just for me, is it? That's all for you. Oh. No, no, for the ladies. <laughs> We're going to go and enjoy this now, guys, and uh, we'll see you somewhere on the water real soon. Here we go, ladies. Every Friday, don't forget to subscribe. Always a new clip and something happening on a hook and a cook. And don't forget to ding the bell. A lot of people have been complaining that they're not getting notifications, so don't forget to ding the bell. There's a little bell there, just press it, and you'll get notifications every time we've got a new clip up. See you next week, guys. Bye. 
We'd like to give a big thank you to all our sponsors for 2019.